wait at the altar are partakers with the altar. Even so hath the Lord also. It's heaven! It really has! It's a burning mercy! is a wonderful thing. It's the only thing in the world that they can never take away from you. And I've always been proud of the job that I do. But if they're going to put conditions on it, if they're going to tell me that I also have to teach your children that it's their duty to bow their heads before arrogance and oppression, then I say no. No, I would rather starve. <laughs> Oh, I bet now you wish you practice what you preach. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> Thou shalt now bear false witness about that. Uh, but... <laughs> if you ask me, the whole episode's quite stupid and pointless. It'll be nothing but a nine days wonder. You mark my words, there's going to be a lot of people laughing on the other side of their faces before long. Mr. Starr, the local attendance officer, will testify that since that date, none of the children of these 18 defendants have attended school. Whatever the rights and wrongs of the dismissal of the headmistress, this is a deliberate flouting of an established authority. And I would like to urge the bench to support the educational authority and treat this matter seriously. <laughs> I didn't send me children because I don't think justice has been done. I don't intend sending them to that school until the whole thing's been looked into properly and the truth comes out. Unfortunately, they are not allowed to pursue justice and truth by flouting the laws of the land. If you want to invoke a public inquiry, it will be done through the proper channels. Find two shillings and six. <laughs> She didn't never go to school because there were a stroit on. And she wasn't going to break the rules, not lightly. Then you'll appreciate my own position, Mr. Potter. I don't want to break the rules of this court. Fine, two and six. <laughs> Guilty. Oh. Is that all? <laughs> yep. Well, that we are Thank you, age. Mr. Garnham. <laughs> to save a lot of time if the other defendants followed your example. Fine, two and six. <laughs> I received this summons on the grounds that my Frank was off school for a week. Now, do you tell me this? How long were those Bernardo's kids off last term? I know nothing about that. Didn't nobody tell he to chase them up? Why hasn't Mrs. Philpott's been summoned? <laughs> why hasn't the Education Committee had a public inquiry? Uh, I'll tell you why. Because they're scared of what will come out. <laughs> <laughs> All we want from this here court is justice and fair play. <laughs> and all it wants from you is two and sixpence.
mind through which you would see. Excuse me, Mrs. Higdon. My name is Walter Hampson. How do you do? Some people know me better as Casey. Oh, you wrote that wonderful piece about us in the Labour Leader. I'm glad you liked it. Uh, could I talk to you for a few minutes or shall I call back? No, it's quite all right. Marjorie, see if they can finish those sums on the board before playtime. They've got ten minutes. Well, what an idyllic scene. Well, there are snags. Hmm? Oh, yes, I, I heard about the rain. How do you cope? Well, once or twice we sheltered in the shop till the rain stopped. One day I sent them home, but we've got the solution now. A wonderful place. Come along and see it. And you must meet my Tom. He'd love to talk to you. Hmm. We're going to have both the classes in here. They keep the room through there for extra space. There you are. Like that. But it feels nice and smooth. Well, how about heating? I got hold of one of them tartar stoves. Yeah. Well, what was this place before? It used to be a carpenter shop. Been empty for years. Belongs to Ambrose Sanders. And here he is. Ambrose? This is Mr. Hampson. He's the gentleman who writes for the newspapers. We've almost given up hope. And in he came and saved the day. Mr. Higdon. Yes, Willie. Uh, Mr. Sandy, is it? That's right. I wonder if I could have a few details. <laughs> Mr. Walter Garnham, labourer. Charge of non-attendance at school. Guilty. Five shillings. <laughs> <coughs> Mr. George Durbage, merchant. The same charge. Mr. Chairman. Now, I've given this matter a lot of thought. And I'd like you to look at it this way. Now, we as parents, we have to feed and clothe our kids. And we pay rates for their education. And that's true. <laughs> Now, to me, it would seem like natural justice that we should have some sort of say in how they're educated. Now, that Mrs. Higdon, that's a fine lady. Now, she's taught my kids more in four weeks than I ever learned in five bloody years. Right. Hold it. <laughs> <laughs> 